Hello everybody, Sean Sewell with Engamer.com Podcast. I have a really cool episode for you today with a fitness professional, Katie Prendergast. Did I say that right? Close. Prendergast. Prendergast. Yes, <laughs> I should know this for like two years we've working together and I've been saying it wrong the whole time, so that's pretty awesome and entertaining. But um, she's awesome and entertaining as well. She runs KPX Fitness uh, here in Denver, Colorado, as well as online. She's got a really, really established and cool online presence. So without further ado, welcome to the show, Katie. Thanks, Sean. Yeah, thanks for being here. All right. We got a few questions to start things off, but we're probably going to go off script right away. <laughs> so enjoy that, listeners. Um, so Katie and I have worked together over at Push Gym for, what, two years oh, plus two now? two years, yeah. Yeah. Um, so she's a fantastic strength and conditioning coach. She's a pre- precision nutrition mm-hmm. certified, yep. which is a really... I don't know if you know what that is, but um, as far as nutrition goes, that's a very elite and uh, respected certification for nutrition consulting. So very cool. Um, She has a bit of a CrossFit background as well. Is that right? A little bit. Yeah. Cool. Cool. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I guess I jumped right into your credentials off the bat. No worries. Uh, So let's take a step or two back a little bit and uh, tell us a bit about yourself, uh, where you're from and your family and all that good stuff. Cool. Yeah. Um, I grew up in Cleveland, well, suburbs of Cleveland, Ohio, and, uh, I I don't know, nothing super exciting about my childhood, very, like, ordinary, middle class, mom, dad, uh, I have a younger sister, um, grew up playing sports, um, I was also, like, super nerdy and loved to read, uh, I still love to read, (laughs) um, but yeah, just pretty average childhood running around and playing sports and, um, Decided to move to Colorado uh, almost exactly five years ago, uh, back at the beginning of October, and uh, because I snowboard. So I wanted to be close to the mountains. Um, Yeah. Well, that's cool. So you you moved from Cleveland five years ago Mm -hmm. because you wanted to go snowboarding. Basically. I love it. (laughs) (laughs) Speaking my language, that's for sure. Well, and to your credit, uh, I have a picture up. I'll I'll try and put this in the show notes. Um, Katie and I are different sizes. As you can imagine, a little bit bit of a difference, but regardless, she still had uh, the gumption to want to go try split boarding. So I actually had the split board on the wall behind you. It's a Mm -hmm. 165 wide. And she used that uh, for her first backcountry uh, snowboarding experience. And And I am 163 centimeters tall. So, whoa, that makes more (laughs) sense in the picture. I was like, that thing is almost as tall. It is taller. It is taller. Wow. I'm definitely putting that picture up as like the cover. That is the (laughs) Just to give you an idea how driven she is to go snowboarding, she (laughs) used that. Uh, at Jones Pass, where we always go. And, and it uh, was very hard to turn. I don't know how you turn it if it's taller than you. And it's wider than you. It's literally bigger than you. Yeah, it's, it's a good board, though. Yeah, that was it's a good fun. experience. Yeah, so that that's just a testament to how uh, dedicated she is to go snowboarding. That's pretty awesome. So five years ago, you pack up, move out here. Mm-hmm. Um, did your sister come with you? Actually, yeah. We, uh, we lived together um, for about three years, and then she went and taught in Spain, which was pretty cool. Wow. Um, then she came back, and now we live together again. So Cool. Yeah. And I think I've met her in the gym a few times, right? Yeah. Comes in and trains? Yep. Cool. Mm-hmm. Very nice. Well, sounds like a pretty ordinary, good life growing up. Mm-hmm. Well, but what got you into fitness? health yeah so like I said I've always been like really into sports played all through Mm -hmm. grade school and high school and then um, I just wasn't as committed to it in college I kind of wanted to focus on like other stuff and not having my life revolve around the sports Mm -hmm. Um, so I was pretty inactive in college and uh, (laughs) after graduation um, I was living at home looking for like quote-unquote real job And, uh, just kind of got into exercising. It Mm -hmm. became somewhat of an outlet. Uh, and I was also pretty motivated to lose like all the weight I had gained from drinking beer and eating shitty dining (laughs) hall food for four years. Um, but then like it kind of shifted. Uh, I just like found CrossFit at some point and weightlifting and loved seeing like getting better technique wise Mm -hmm. and getting stronger week to week and just being able to like do cool shit. Yeah. So yeah, now it's just kind of like going to the gym, see what I can do. And it's more of like a performance thing. And I've noticed the carryover to the whole like rest of my life and just building like strength, confidence, um, and being able to snowboard and rock climb and be like a lot better at the things that I like to do. 
That makes sense. Carries over very well. Yeah. Yeah, and I've, I've had the chance of uh, working alongside you as well as watching you train yourself as well as students and clients. And you are very detail oriented, and I really respect that about you. Your form's spot on, and uh, your approach to fitness, I, I can get behind, is awesome. Thank you. Yeah, it's good stuff. And you're one of the few, um, I don't say one of the few women, but you're one of the few women I see using a barbell extensively. It's yeah. cool. Yeah. Uh, not every client, because, you know, you got to start with the basics before sure. you're lifting mm -hmm. with a barbell. But I like to get people up to that point because it helps move heavier weights. Like, it's a great mm -hmm. tool for that. And lifting heavy is just how you get strong. So I definitely agree. Yeah. Eventually, that's kind of the progression. If people stay with me long enough, we'll get there eventually. <laughs> that's awesome. It's a good carrot for them. Yeah. I think I know the answer to this question, but what is your favorite move with the barbell? Oh, you probably do know that. I think I know a stage question. Yeah. yeah. Kind of. <laughs> uh, I love anything posterior chain. Uh, mm -hmm. So the deadlift is my personal favorite exercise for myself. Um, and then kettlebell swings for my clients mm -hmm. are um, another thing. Like, eventually, we'll get there um, because... That it's the hip hinge. Yeah. And that's the thing that people really struggle with is using their hips for movement instead of relying on their low back or being quad dominant where like their leg muscles are taking over everything. Mm -hmm. So every one of my clients is some sort of hip hinge, whatever they're capable of when they walk in the door on day one. And then we just build up until they have that capacity for the kettlebell swing or heavier deadlifts and stuff like that. No, I, I dig that a lot. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. I think one of the, the, missing elements in most people's fitness program is a good hinge mm -hmm. and I especially I think you probably see this too with a lot of skiers and snowboarders or people who do stuff we like they focus so much on the quads mm -hmm. and I'm like that's not what you need I mean you need everything in balance but then you get knee injuries because you have no posterior chain strength right. and resilience and yeah the hip hinge is just something that makes you instantly more athletic yeah once you figure it out yeah, yeah, it's you're right. And you know what, to your credit too, like I was never much for barbell until about a week and a half ago and I was <laughs> very uh very grateful to have been able to take the strong first SFL, strong first lifter mm -hmm. course in man that opened my eyes up. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I'm gonna <laughs> do a brain dump later today with my friend Ryan and I'm happy to do one with you over a push. Uh right on. Yeah, it's up your alley yeah. for sure. Well that's awesome. So you saw the benefit for yourself and it carrying over into your life. At what point did you realize you wanted to train other people? Mm -hmm. So fast forward a couple years, I was working at like a standard nine to five desk job and kind of hating it. Um, and then I was planning on moving to Colorado. So I just decided to do a complete 180. Uh, I got certified as a personal trainer, um, moved out here and did a couple meets, meetups, whatever with, mm -hmm. um, GMs at gyms and ended up landing a pretty good gig at a neighborhood gym uh, where I worked for three years. And I mean, that's just kind of how I got started. Uh, I always knew that I needed to be in a gym to get experience, um, to like be around people and have um, like new members coming in the door who wanted to work with a trainer or whatever the case may be, um, and just get good experience training all kinds of people, men, women, younger, older, uh, with athletic backgrounds or sedentary backgrounds injured, fully healthy, like the whole spectrum. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I worked with probably the youngest kid was 14 when he started and up to people in their 70s. So just a really wide range of people that helped me kind of hone my skill set and being able to like talk to anyone and teach anyone how to squat, hinge, push, pull, and move well. Yeah, uh, it's, that's great. Love to hear that. And I've, I've seen it actually in person too. It's great because you're um, – rapport with other people you're working with is really cool. So I should write you a testimonial. <laughs> 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 I probably sense. will actually. <laughs> uh, good stuff. So, uh, so you've been doing, so was it five, six years now as a trainer? Five years. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. Congrats. That's a big milestone. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Most trainers I know don't make it. Well, not ones I know, but most trainers don't make it past two years. Uh, that's the statistic I've heard as well. Yeah. Yep. It's, it's crazy. I mean, um, you know, Chris Flower and I went to MPTI, which recently is not in business anymore, but that was something that they would bring to our attention very often is how how hard it is to make it. Mm -hmm. And it is. And I think it is for any industry. But uh, because we're, we're customer facing, we're, <laughs> we're part time therapists. Yes, <laughs> that comes with it. It does. Uh, you know, kind of like hairstylist or something, uh, but on a stronger level. Yeah. And um yeah, we had to fit a lot of different uh, modalities and a lot of different people, like you mentioned. Not just it, 
I think some trainers might get into this business thinking they're going to train athletes. athletes. Yeah, yeah, right. If they're lucky <laughs> <laughs> or unlucky. I mean, I've worked with some athletes. They're not pleasant to work with. But what is your – what population do you think you gravitate towards the most? And I love that question. So when I started out, I wanted to work with everyone or – even if I didn't want to, I had to because that's just how the gym yeah, operates. Yeah, you cut your teeth, yep. Right. But um, by doing that, I got to see who I worked best with. Mm -hmm. And kind of like you said, like my first thing is I want to work with people who are a little bit athletic because that's my background. Um, so I know how to work with them. But like not high-level athletes, just like weekend warriors, people mm -hmm. that want to get better for skiing, snowboarding, uh, mainly out here in Colorado. Uh, also some hikers, climbers, that kind of stuff. Um but actually, what I really enjoy is working with um, older clients. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't want to throw a number out there because, like, the age doesn't matter. But, like, uh, I have a lot of clients who might be retired and really their focus is just, like, on quality of life. Mm -hmm. So being able to be strong so that they can walk up and down the stairs, so that they can play with their grandkids. Uh, I worked with um, one of my clients' moms, which is great. She's awesome. Uh, and we ended up all going climbing, like their whole family. Uh, so we had three generations there, his kid, my client, and the his mother, the grandma. Wow. And she was just super stoked that she hadn't been climbing in like eight to ten years and, in her words, like got out of the parking lot. So she got up <laughs> on this wall and was like, yeah, it was a good payoff. That's hugely rewarding. That's awesome. That's And I agree with you. You know, I think when I started training, I thought I would have a, a different audience. And like you, I found that, I prefer the people that might be of our parents' age, yeah. basically. Yeah. And them understanding quality of life is more important than uh, you know scoring points, whatever. Right. Yeah, and I think, too, it's they have a deeper appreciation for their fitness because yes. it's something that they've seen go downhill. Absolutely. Whereas the vast majority of my clients are women in their 30s and 40s who – kind of come to me looking to lose weight mm -hmm. uh, initially, but then we get them strength training, and I love to see that, like, switch flip where they're like, this is actually pretty badass. Like, I feel super cool lifting this heavy stuff off the ground. Um, and then their focus kind of switches from, like, let me lose weight to let me get strong. Yeah. And that's super fun. Oh, that's awesome. Yep. Oh, like hearing that. Well, you know, you'd probably appreciate this. Um, in that Strong First Lifters uh, course we just took, it was mostly women. Oh yeah, that's, yeah. Isn't that's that mind? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even uh, Doc Hartle, uh, the instructor, he's uh, he's a doctor. He's badass. I got to work with him for the SFG a few months ago. Even he was kind of taken back. It was really cool. And he had two assistants, and I've worked with both as assistants in previous uh, courses, and they're great people. But his um, like right hand lady was like your size, and she was putting up some major weight in yeah. beautiful form, and it was cool to see. Um, so it's basically like Ryan, the owner of the gym. Ryan Humphreys, myself, uh, some running back from Chicago, and some big, tall, white kid, and the rest were women. It was cool. <laughs> you would have loved it. But, um, yeah, I'm like, I like that you found that specific niche, and you're helping them, and they're, they're seeing the benefit of getting yeah. strong. There's, I heard this quote. I think it's from Doc, actually. There's no case where being strong is not helped. Yeah, 100% agree. Right. It's super cool, right? My whole motto is strength makes everything else easier, whether yeah. that's carrying all your groceries in one trip, which mm -hmm. I do <laughs> always. <laughs> and uh, dog method. <laughs> or exactly. Um, I thought you'd pick up on that. That was good. Uh, carrying all your groceries in one trip or just like crushing it all on a mountain. Mm -hmm. Like if you want to be a better skier, snowboarder, climber, like being strong cannot possibly hurt you. Right. So. I'm glad to hear from another fitness professional. And I've been preaching this for years, of course. And the people are like, why are you focused so much on this hip hinging and the kettlebells and strength training? Yeah. How's that going to carry over in the mountains? Well, it just does. Yeah. Okay, just, just fucking do it. <laughs> <laughs> trust me. Just it trust works. me. It works. <laughs> it works for people much better than us. So it's going to work for you. Yeah. Uh, love it. All right, we're val verified. Do some more kettlebell swings and deadlifts, people. <laughs> it's legit. Uh, good stuff. Um, so... I think uh, I know one of your activities, or two of them at least, but mm -hmm. what activities do you like to do outside the gym? Yeah, so um, you had mentioned that I do a little bit of CrossFit, but that's in the gym. Mm -hmm. Outside of the gym, I like to snowboard. Um, I, that's kind of my first love. It's why I moved to Colorado, why mm -hmm. I wanted to be in the mountains. Um, I've also kind of gotten hooked on climbing. Uh, first week I was out in Colorado, a friend of mine was like, oh, you want to go climb? My friends are, like, really into it. I was like, heck yes. 
and I had had some indoor climbing experience in Ohio. Um, so they took us out and it was my first time climbing on real rock and it was super fun. And since then, like I've learned bouldering, like top rope, belay, lead belay. So I mostly lead climb. Um, yeah. And then you took me last year out to, uh, Jones pass and got to do some split boarding. That's awesome. That's something that I'm super into now too. Good. Yeah. Well, yep. happy to have you in backcountry. <laughs> it's like if I care about somebody, they're going to go to Jones Pass at some point because <laughs> I'm there twice a week. <laughs> yeah. It's a cool place. It's pretty freaking cool. I mm. actually went there with the dogs Monday night um, in the attempt to watch a meteor shower, mm. which, you know, was always beautiful. And we were surprised by, well, pleasantly surprised by a blizzard. Yeah. Yeah. So that was, we, when we got there at three o'clock, it was 19 degrees. It's not going to get warmer. So uh, yeah, the dogs are hardy. But Jones Pass is beautiful. Yep. Yeah, for sure. So, um, yeah, it's really cool about the climbing, too. Uh, most of what you said is over my head. Um, I'm embarrassed because I'm not a climber. Almost everybody I know and respect is a climber, though, so <laughs> I should learn the language. Uh, but I know uh, that scares the shit out of me, so I don't do it. But um, I'm glad that you do. That's awesome. <laughs> it can be kind of scary, too. Like, I, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> right. And I think that's why a lot of people do it. Like, they right. face their fears. Yep. I've, I face enough fears that I'm gonna, I'll finally tackle that eventually. But, um yeah, it's really cool. And on your website, uh, kpxfitness.com, you can see pictures of Katie uh, climbing and enjoying the good life out here in Colorado. There's a mountain bike picture probably too, but I don't do a whole lot of that. That terrifies me. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's so scary. <laughs> yeah, there's you on the mountain bike. And then you want some rock. Got the kettlebell overhead. Yep. How fun. Well, let's talk about some of the services you offer because you offer a wide range of services. Mm -hmm. Um, and I recently referred somebody who I, I think highly of to you for uh, nutrition consulting. Mm -hmm. So let's let's delve into what you do. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned I offer a wide variety of services, but uh, I think they're all kind of complementary to each other. Mm -hmm. So um, when I was planning on leaving the gym that I started at and going on my own, one of the things that I wanted to avoid was, first of all, working like 6 a.m. to 8 p.m., mm -hmm. and that split shift, and that's just like what you do as a personal trainer. You have to work when people are available, when they're not working. Um, but I wanted to kind of avoid that and mold my schedule in a more manageable way so that I wasn't one of those people that burnt out after two years in the industry. Mm -hmm. um, so part of that has been kind of a hybrid approach to training. I really would prefer to start with someone in the gym and teach them how to move well, and we meet most of my clients I meet with two to three times a week. But then the hybrid part comes in. I have an app, so I send people workouts to do when we're not meeting. And then we'll kind of like taper off how often we meet in person as that person becomes more proficient in the gym, more confident training on their own, and as they establish that habit. Because I'm sure you know, a lot of our job is to just have that appointment with someone because oh, otherwise yeah. they won't show up and do it themselves. Yeah, no so accountability. It's, exactly. So it's the accountability piece. Um, and so the, the app that I use allows me to give them the workout and then they can come back and say like through the app, here, I did all these exercises. So we can track their progress and I'm like super into data and I know you probably are too. Mm -hmm. A bunch of my clients love to see like their workout graphs where they see their lifts going up each week. Um, or if they stall out, that tells us like, okay, something's not working here and we can go fix it. Um, so it's a really cool uh, tool for me as the trainer to monitor everyone's progress. Um, and then the nutrition component, something that I noticed when I was working at um, my local gym starting out for a couple years, everyone wants to come in and lose weight, right? Like that's probably the number one reason anyone hires a trainer. Um, my clients weren't losing weight. Like they were getting stronger in the gym, but we would do weigh-ins and like – scale would be up and down and all over the place and they get frustrated and they give up. So uh, I pursued the precision nutrition certification, which as you mentioned is like a really well respected. It's probably the number one most strenuous um, nutrition certifications out there in terms of they cover a lot of behavioral change, a lot of psychology. Right. The transferical process of change. Yeah. And not just eat carbs eat this many carbs, eat that much protein, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's a lot about like teaching people why they're doing those things and getting them to buy into the process and understanding that like it's not going to happen overnight. Change takes time. Here's how we're going to go about it. And we're going to like attack your habits and figure out how to improve them so that you get the result that you want, whether that's getting stronger in the gym, whether that's losing weight, building muscle, whatever. 
Um, it's all it all comes down to habits. So um, those are pretty much the three services that I provide: like in-person training. Um, I do remote coaching, um, and that's not for beginners. That's for people that like come to me with a couple years of like training experience, whatever. Like maybe it's running or boot camps or lifting weights a little bit on their own, who just want me to design a program and mm-hmm. coach them through the process, provide that accountability. Um, and then the nutrition. So it all kind of meshes together. That's awesome. And I know firsthand, um, I've been a fan of uh, John's, John Briardi, the founder. Mm, yeah. Right? He's For years. Cool. He, he's cool so dude. awesome. He's <laughs> he's a great person, like on TED Talks and like in any kind of talks. And he has a book coming out, I think. Changemaker. Yeah, yeah. Plug for John Berardi's yeah. book. It comes out in November. Yes, right. You <laughs> I can pre-ordered get it, on this it already. Link below. Actually, I'll put the link below. <laughs> you could put the link in, yeah. And I, I think if you pre-order it, you get some freebies or something. Oh, it's so much. I, I pre-ordered it. Yeah. And it's literally a book before the book. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. It's really cool yeah. stuff. All right. So the Precision Nutrition Certification, um, my friend took it, and it took him about, I feel like, nine months to a year to accomplish it. How long did it take you to go through it? So... Uh, I think it was about six months. It might've been a little bit more than that, but like I tried to do a chapter a week and then like stuff at the beginning was all just like, here's the science of metabolism. So Mm -hmm. that was easy. And then, uh, my pace slowed down a little bit as I got into new information about like the habit change stuff Mm -hmm. and, um, kind of the higher level nutrition, um, that I wasn't as familiar with. So yeah, I think about six months. Wow. It's a lot of content to cover. Um, and like I said, I'm not certified through that. I definitely follow his materials for several years and appreciate his intelligence and insights. And I like how it makes it tangible, mm-hmm. you know, uh, palatable for people. Like, correct me if I'm wrong, but one of the principles they use is using your hands for measurement. Yep. Can you speak a little bit more about that? Yeah. So um, as the nutrition coach, it's kind of my job to assess where someone is on like a beginner to advanced scale. So in precision nutrition's language, it's like a level one client, a level two, a level three client. Um, and if you're starting out with someone who's like level one, maybe they don't know what foods are carbohydrates or what foods are proteins. Um, so they boil it down to really basics and using your hand to assess portions is helpful because most people have a hand with them wherever <laughs> yes. they go. So you don't even have an excuse when you're like at a party or you're eating out or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's like a palm sized serving of protein, um, a cupped handful serving of carbohydrates. Um, I forget the one for vegetables because I always just tell people that that's all you can eat. Sure, like no one is gaining weight because they're eating too many vegetables. Mm-hmm. And then it's a thumb sized portion of fats. Yep. And you just kind of break your plate down into sections like half gets vegetables a quarter gets protein, a quarter gets starch. Um, Yeah, so it makes it really visual for people. Mm -hmm. And it's really accessible for someone who doesn't necessarily know like all the ins and outs and they're new to this and they're just trying to learn how to eat a little bit healthier. Oh, I love it. You explained that very well. Um, Thank you. And most people have a hand. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Most people. (laughs) Let's give it a hand to those people with hands. (laughs) (laughs) Well, um, next question for you. What advice would you give to somebody new to fitness? New to fitness. Um, it's a great question. And uh, just do it. Yeah. I think a lot of people are held back by like worrying that other people in the gym are going to be judging them because oh, yeah. they look like a newbie and they look like they don't know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. And maybe they're stupid for not knowing what they're doing. Um, and I assure you that all of those people are too busy focusing on themselves to worry about what you're doing. And if you really feel that out of place, I recommend working with a coach for Mm -hmm. at least, even if you just, a lot of gyms have like an intro package where you can get three or four sessions or whatever, and just work with that coach and tell them that you want to learn good technique. You want to learn the major movement patterns. So we've got like squats, lunges, hip hinge, uh, pushes and pulls. Um, And just once you learn those movements and you get comfortable with them, you can do anything in the gym. I mean, everything is based off of those movement patterns. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just do it. (laughs) Just do it. I love it. And don't take it too personal. People are not judging you. Yeah, (laughs) They are there for their own good. Uh, And if anything, they probably would support you. Yeah, totally. And you never know, like people are always nervous, like, oh, I needed to use that machine, but someone else is using it. Like just ask to work in. You might make a friend or they say no. And then you're like, okay, that person's kind of a dick. (laughs) That person in the future. Yeah. And that's good advice. Just do it. I love that. All right. What advice would you give to a new trainer? Also a good question. And um, I would say that everything that I thought was important when I started training isn't that important. Like Mm -hmm. 
being in the industry for that for more than two years, which is the burnout rate that we were talking about earlier, is about showing people that you give a shit. Mm -hmm. They don't care if you can design the best workout program for them. They want to know that you're listening to them, you're listening to what they want, and they want to feel confident that you're going to have their best interests at heart. And then, yeah, like you should know how to coach movements, but just focusing on like, oh, this program's amazing. It's, that's not the point. Yeah. Like people show up because they want to be around you and they want to work with you and they don't care if you're the best coach in the world. And honestly, you're probably not going to be the best coach in the world. That's going to take you yes. decades of experience. So yeah, just learn to care about people. That's awesome. <laughs> Otherwise you're like in the wrong industry because you're yeah. certainly not going to be making a ton of money doing this. No, that's true. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's good for you guys to know. You don't go into this to make a lot of money. You go into it because you care about other people. Mm hmm. So I like the correlation. That's good. Um, yeah, you're right. You can take any kind of uh, accreditation, have any degrees or certifications, but if you can't make a person feel comfortable and happy and see some results and be a good person to be around, you won't have business. Right. Yeah, that's good stuff. All right. You have any favorite success stories? Um, yeah, a bunch. Um, I bet. <laughs> and I think the running theme with a lot of them is, like I said, I work with a lot of women who like are in their later 20s, in their 30s, maybe 40s, who come to me for weight loss and they express frustration that they've tried everything and everything is usually referring to cardio and like boot camp classes mm -hmm. and like all the fad diets that you could think of and nothing works and they're super frustrated um, and they just like really don't know what to do. So they seek out some help. And like I said earlier, I love seeing someone like learn to do something and then realize how cool it feels. Like for example, like pulling a heavy deadlift mm -hmm. and just feeling empowered by the strength that they're building and realizing that like, okay, the weight loss is cool, but it's kind of an ancillary effect of getting stronger and just building confidence. Um, and I'll ask my clients at regular intervals when I'm kind of reassessing their programs, like what do you want to focus on for the next couple months? And like the other day I had someone say, you know, I really, like she's had an ankle injury, so we haven't been training lower body. And she just says like, you know, I want to get my legs stronger again. I want to put legs back into my program because I just want to feel strong. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just stuff like that. Um, seeing people get more confident in the gym and more comfortable and like kind of turning away from the weight loss thing a bit. Because, you know, anyone can lose weight by not eating for a couple of days, True. but yeah. like if you get strong and you build muscle, like you're going to look leaner and you're going to feel better. Yeah. You're going to feel better. You're going to move better. Mm -hmm. Everything moves. Everything is better. Mm -hmm. I like that. Um, I know you're detail oriented. Do you have any, uh, <laughs> in a good way, um, any, uh, favorite routines you have? Yeah. So, um, I think we've had this conversation before we have kind of a similar morning routine yeah. of, um, I think you wake up way earlier than I do though. <laughs> <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> um, so first thing in the morning, of course, is like feed the dog because otherwise he'll whine. Mm -hmm. Um, but after that it's, I'll sit down and write in my, um, like day planner, three things that I'm grateful for. Oh yeah. And, um, it could be something like as minor as the smell of coffee brewing in the kitchen, or something like deeper, like, oh, cool. I get to work with my favorite clients today oh, I and I that. get to just yeah. have an impact. That's yeah. I'm, I'm with you on that. I, I try and do that journal, um, as often as possible. And I like that you do that too. Mm -hmm. And I like that you include the people you work with. Yeah. Cause I'm grateful for them too. Yeah. That's, that's very helpful. Um, any favorite quotes? You know, I don't really, yeah, um, I like I'm, that honest answer. Yeah. Like <laughs> I'll hear something and be like, oh, that's a really profound statement. Like, mm -hmm. I like that. But I don't, yeah. yeah. I would, couldn't, like, list yeah. it off, like, high fidelity, top 10 favorite quotes. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good reference. No, I'm with you on that, too. I mean, uh, I hear a lot of cool quotes, and, yeah. There's not one particular one I could stick to either. Yeah. That's cool. Well, you've covered a lot of really cool territory here. Um, is there any parting words of wisdom? Um, I don't know about parting words of wisdom, but, um, if you're interested in learning more about how to get strong, I would say, check out my website, uh, kpxfitness.com. And, um, like I mentioned earlier, my like catchphrase is always, everything is easier when you're stronger. So, mm -hmm. um, to anyone out there who's like, should I go to the gym? Should I learn to lift? Yes, do it. 
Um, it will improve every aspect of your life and it doesn't need to consume your life either. It's just kind of, it, yeah, oh, no, I like <laughs> it's that. just kind of, uh, what am I trying to say? It, it should be like a force mul multiplier. It's like mm -hmm. you lift and you feel better. You get stronger. You're more confident. It's like mental as well. Um, and even if weightlifting is not your thing, find something active that is that for you, that builds that confidence. I like that. That's a good answer. I could not agree more. And I can attest that she is a fantastic coach and person in general. And uh, her website, kpxfitness.com, is definitely worth going to. She has several free guides on there to help yep. you out. It's I think the one right now is uh, ski and snowboard focused because we're heading oh, into yeah. that part of the year. So if anyone's yes. out there looking for a good leg program and a good all around program for athleticism, yeah, that one's up there. Yeah. And that's free. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. That's nothing to lose guys. Everything on the website's free. There's a ton of articles, fitness, nutrition, all that. So that check awesome. it out. <laughs> well, I'll put that in the show notes. So make it very easy for people to find. Um, Katie, thank you for being on here and thank you for sharing your insights and uh, being awesome. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. All right, listeners. Uh, thanks for checking out the engagement.com podcast. I'm Sean Sewell, your host. Until next time, take care. <laughs>